Good morning and welcome to this time of reflection for the readings for Palm Sunday, the 28th of March, 2021. Let us just take a few moments to gather our thoughts in prayer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. The night is past and the day lays open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet him as our King, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our collect or prayer for this, our Palm Sunday. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified, yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for those who are coping with the coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort in knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm number 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 to 29. Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 to 29. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O God. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from your house. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festival procession with branches, up to the thorn th horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel for this morning is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethanage, near Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, that last mile in the road to the cross. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? But now we are with Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem. Whenever I read this gospel passage, I can't help but feel the hope and excitement that those people must have felt as they watched Jesus enter into Jerusalem. You can imagine, here was Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. Not a, a mighty steed, but a donkey, a symbol of peace. And so we see him entering into Jerusalem, and the people are just beyond themselves with excitement. Reminds me of going to a parade in Calgary, the Stampede Parade. Every summer, it was a great parade to anticipate. And you'd get up early in the morning and rush down to one of the main streets in Calgary to get a good spot. And then you'd wait. And it seemed like forever till finally you heard the music of the bands coming down the street. And then great things would come by. You'd have horses, and you'd have chuck wagons, and you'd have fire trucks, and you'd have police on motorcycles, and you'd have all kinds of people in fancy cars waving at you who you never knew who they were, but you waved back anyway. And then it was over. It was all quiet again, and you simply packed up your stuff and either went back to work, or sometimes you went down to the fairgrounds to see what was happening there. But the parade and the excitement were gone. So when you can imagine the all these people gathering around Jesus, the tremendous excitement that they felt. Because it wasn't going to go away. Because their excitement was the coming of a new kingdom. They were ushering Jesus into Jerusalem in the hopes that their lives were going to change, that he was going to take over, that the authorities who had kept them oppressed were going to be disappeared. They were going to be sent away. And their lives were going to be changed. And that was the hope and the anticipation and the excitement that they felt. And so they couldn't help but throw their cloaks down in front of Jesus in the hopes that he would cross over. And the palms were waving as a symbol of strength. And so you see Jesus enter into Jerusalem. And as they go into Jerusalem, he does something unusual, doesn't he? And this is what I'd like to focus our attention on today. You kind of gloss over it with all the things that are happening in this passage. But listen to this. Then he entered into Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So why did he go to the temple? Think about that. You have all these people gathered around. You thought that you might want to stop and just thank them for being there. You might want to say, well, I'll see you down at the market tomorrow. We'll chat then. But he doesn't do any of that, does he? 
He goes to the temple and he goes there. And as it says, he looked around at everything. As if to say, this is where it's all going to take place. I just want to see it before all of the stuff happens. I want to look at it. I want to take it all in. And then what does he do after that? He and the 12 leave Jerusalem and go to Bethany. They don't stick around. As if to say, now that I've seen all this, now that I've seen the temple where it's all going to take place, I need to have some peace and quiet. So off he goes to Bethany. He leaves Jerusalem with the 12 and goes to Bethany. As if to say, in that peace and quiet, I want to talk to my father. I want to teach the disciples as much as I can before all that commotion takes place in the temple. So you can ask yourself, well, that's fine, John, but what does that mean for you and I? Well, you and I are with those same people as they ushered in Jesus. You and I are there shouting, Hosanna in the highest, with our palms and our cloaks. But what's important is that you and I take the time now to enter into the temple, to reacquaint ourselves with our temple, with our church, and then take a moment to talk to our God. And I think that's what's so important, is that now that we're in the temple, now we're in our church, we take the time to look around, to just anticipate the next few days that'll take place. And take a moment to talk to God and to give thanks that his son is about to enter into a journey through Monday, Thursday and the Last Supper, to death on the cross, to the resurrection of Easter. So think about that in the days ahead. Think about your church. Think about being a part of it and giving thanks to God for his son. Rejoice in God's new creation. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. We ask for God's healing grace upon Bob Honders, Elena, Pauline, Velma, Nancy, James, Angela, Krista, Grace, Marjorie, Velota, Yvonne, Gore, Norma, Richard, Stephen, Michael, Shirley M, Carol G, Linda, Carrie and Matthew, Barbara, Kelly, the Bridges family, Pat, and to know and to those known to you alone. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are in retirement or long-term care homes, remembering especially Anita, Thelma, Pauline, David and Catherine. And now, O oh Lord, we lift our own prayers and petitions, which weigh heavy on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our congregational prayer cycle, we pray for George, Barbara, Jonathan, Sarah, Thelma, Colin, Colleen, and Lorraine. 
By way of blessings and thanksgiving, we give thanks for our members who are engaged in the music ministry of our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you promise your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As we take our worship and praise and prayer from this place, let us in our daily lives sustain us through the love of your Heavenly Father. May we feel the presence of our Savior walking beside us and know the power of the Spirit in both our actions and our words. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for sharing this time with me this morning and have a great day.